Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Today, I do have a very special guest because she's neither an investor nor a startup, but she's the chief economist of German bank KFW. Hello and welcome. Hi, Jörn. Nice to be here. Totally my pleasure. Um, you are... Dr. Fritzi Köhler Geib. Uh, we'll spell it out for you down here in the show notes for everybody who doesn't speak German. And you are the chief economist of KFW. We may add that KFW is not a usual business bank, but it's a government owned bank that helps with the economic development and the implementation of federal programs and government programs at all. Exactly. Yeah, it's a uh, state owned. And its mission is to help transformation in Germany and worldwide and basically goes back to the time after the Second World War, where the idea was that uh, the German economy is supposed to be based on a market economy, but that you can have areas where you have market failures. And it's this public bank that is helping in those areas of market failure to put incentives uh, so that you see uh, sufficient investment, for example, in areas like uh, prevention of climate change, which is a societal goal. Mm -hmm. But you are here today because you, as KFW, especially your department, are publishing an index, a private equity barometer, it is called. So it's a VC and PE investor index that we've been quoting quite frequently on our regular news together with Chris. I do believe we did it at least since 2020, but I just realized your index is actually published since 2013, which, which is pretty awesome. Um, a little bit about you. I found you studied in Paris. University of Michigan at St. Gallen and Pompeo Fabra in Spain. So you, you also speak some French, some Spanish. Oui, monsieur, si, senor. <laughs> Muy bien. <laughs> um, you, you later went to work in um, Washington, D.C. I've seen you worked for World Bank and IMF. So uh, my understanding is you basically lived from 2008 to 2019, mostly in Washington, D.C., because we talked before and you told me you've been quite traveling. Yes, exactly. So I was based in Washington, D.C., but I was uh, traveling to many places, Pakistan, Ukraine, uh, and then a lot of Latin American countries. And towards the end, I focused on Central America. Central America. Do you have a secret tip where you can make great vacations? Panama, Costa Rica, El Salvador, they all are very different. Of course, I'm an economist and from an economics perspective, all those countries are very different, can learn a lot. And it's, it's fascinating economies, really. And, mm -hmm. but, but I also have to say it's beautiful countries. Mm -hmm. Would never dispute that. And um, since 2019, you're the chief economist at KFW and it, it, Everybody knows I'm a big football fan. Um, you're still watching games of the Michigan uh, football team, the Wolverines? <laughs> well, I have to admit, yes, I was during my studies in Ann Arbor uh, for six months. I'm not such a particular football fan. I do a lot of sports myself and I am a uh, infrequent watcher of sports. So uh, that also applies to, to football, I have to say. Uh, I see, see. Um, can we go a little bit into the index right now? Because um, my understanding is it was started back in 2013. Do you know a little bit about the history? Why KFW actually started this barometer, this index? So the index actually started in the first quarter of 2003. So it's even um, older than that. Um 
maybe it uh, let me go back to to the part of uh, KFW uh, correcting market failures uh, in Germany. Uh, KFW as a bank has a daughter, KFW Capital, and um, that was created in 2018 to foster the development of the VC market in Germany. Because there is the recognition that the state itself is not the best investor and is not so good in choosing a particular startup, the idea of KFW Capital is that it works as a fund of funds so that it basically puts public money into the market without choosing uh, particular startups but by um, choosing different uh, investment booths if you wish and that started in 2018 to develop the market further mm -hmm. i see and um we we may get into KFW at another uh, at another time. Um, we, we want to stick a little bit with the index. Um, as I said, the earliest version I could find is back in 2013. But nonetheless, it's. I think nobody nobody would like to talk about the past. Can you tell us a little bit about how you get the data from this index? My understanding is that there are two entities: the German VC and PE association that participates as well as the uh, Deutsche Börse Venture Network. Both of them have several hundred investor members and actually you do a survey with them, right? Absolutely. So we started out this product uh, with BVK, with the German VC Association. Um, we are surveying around about uh 450 or bfk is uh, around 200 investors and um later on we also joined uh with deutsche börse there is another 450 investors and we have been surveying uh these investors now since 80 quarters so we start to have uh, some uh some uh time series uh observations about the German VC market. Mm -hmm. uh, we may add for everybody who's not familiar with Germany, Deutsche Börse uh, is the operator of the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, but we're here talking about a network they set up separately to help fund early stage companies with VC and private equity alike. So before we get into the actual index let's have a little ad break and be back in a few seconds okay now we are back um we'll be mainly talking about the germ venture capital barometer as you call it uh, the most recent one is the fourth quarter of 2022 which is actually pretty fitting we are recording this on the 15th of February 2023. And um, the, all across the newspapers here in Germany, there have been news that it collapsed. Um, not, not too sure if I would use that dramatic fashion, but nonetheless, those newspapers still have to make a living, I'm sure. Um, but before we talk about the current situation, can we talk a little bit about the index and how it is composed? Because my understanding is that there are three main components um, and then there are uh, sub-components like fundraising, entry valuations, exit opportunities, new investments, deal flow quantity, deal flow quality, deal flow innovativeness, taxation framework, write downs, economy, interest rates, and funding. So I assume if you dish out this survey and somebody has to reply to it, it it's nothing you can do in like five minutes, right? <laughs> yeah. So um, we are very thankful for the collaboration with, with the investors that, uh, that we basically survey. Um, the, the index is um, uh, calculated um, by asking for 
uh, an assessment of the current situation in the market. So the uh, environment, no, and then also six months ahead expectations. And the climate altogether is then basically um, a, a composite index of, of those two elements. We then also have uh, the, the um, uh, components of the indicator that you, uh, that you mentioned that basically give insight into particular aspects of the VC market that obviously are key for, for investors. And as you had already mentioned, uh, the end of 2022 uh, was rather gloomy in the German VC market. It had appeared as if the, the, um, the downturn had come to a stop in the third quarter. But then uh, in the fourth quarter, we did see um, the, the index uh, picking up a worsening of, of the sentiment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, my understanding is you give them um, options like from very good to very bad and the investors evaluate all those points on their scale respectively and then you aggregate this view of let's say somewhere around 400 investors with I understand investment interest and or headquarter in Germany um, and aggregate all this together to come up with this index that should paint a pretty decent picture of the current mood of the investors at the point the survey was taken. Yeah, and I, I would say it's neither a backward nor a forward looking indicator because it has both components. No, um, it, As we ask about uh, expectations, there is certainly a forward-looking perspective, um, but we also ask investors about the, the current um, or their assessment of the current situation. And we show both the, the responses separately and then also as the climate, no, which uh, puts those um, indices together. What's also really important is that we um, put the, the answers um, in perspective to the historical mean, and then um, show how um, how the answers deviate from that mean, and and thereby we we um, uh, we show how the market in the current situation and the expectations are developing vis-a-vis -vis that historical mean. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, and, and my understanding is because you, you, you talked about a forward looking and current situation. So the business situation right now is what they evaluate as business situation. And the expectation is when you ask them, what do you expect like six months down the road? Right. Yeah, exactly. Or what do you expect within the next six months? Yes. I see. There is a lot more information in everything we link here. Um, I link the website in English. And as I said, it's from uh, fourth quarter 2022 to the first quarter of 2013. All the data available here. Um, my question would be, um, how can somebody reading it actually use it, assuming that a, stating that 80% of my audience is located outside of Germany, Austria, or Switzerland. So many of them don't even have like physical or personal touch points with the market right now. How could those people use this index? How is it useful for them? Yeah, I think it's extremely useful because it gives the time series of um, assessments of uh, investors in the German VC market about uh, highly relevant um elements no and um and uh perspectives on the german vc market uh be it entry valuations be it uh fundraising environment be it uh, the assessment of uh quantity and also quality of deal flow so i think it gives a uh in particular 
for for people who are not so familiar with the market, it gives a very quick overview of uh, how main investors in the market assess the market at that point and also uh, with with the six months outlook. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about fundraising because when we talk here on the channel about fundraising, it's usually startups pitching investors. But since you ask investors here, I would assume this fundraising environment is for the VC investors actually pitching their investors, meaning the pension funds, uh, the insurance companies, what is generally referred to as LP, the limited partners. Yes. That's uh, b basically how easily uh, they can uh, raise funds for, mm -hmm. uh, for, 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 for their investment booth. Mm -hmm. And again, a little bit different logic. If you talk about entry valuations, this one is pretty green, then went up 34.2 points in the one we just have ahead of us. And um, I would assume it's good for the investors. That means the entry valuations went a little bit down. So for the entrepreneurs, it should be red, right? Yeah. So basically, of course, when um, when entry valuations go up, uh, it means for investors that returns potentially go down, uh, while um, uh, the inverse is true if the the valuations go down, which in a way are good because then you can uh, you can achieve higher higher returns on on the investment. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Um and um, let me quickly get back here. So that means also the deal flow, quality and quantity, everything is seen from the perspective of the investors. That would also mean if I look here, the write downs are pretty red. That would mean um, the investors replied to had to take more write downs than previously expected or they wanted to. Admittedly, yes, I know they now want to take write downs, but this one uh, appears to be uh, pretty red. Yeah, and I think it also has to do with the fact that you have a lot of uh, company valuations coming in in the fourth quarter, and so I think it's also um, quite plausible that um, that the indicators uh, turned unfavorable in the fourth quarter because it's true now we we have been in a difficult economic environment uh you see write downs then uh, come in in the fourth quarter and that then also puts pressure on the sentiment in the vc market mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i see and um there are also some bigger indicators the economy i would assume that's a question um you ask the investors, what do you expect the economy to be in the future or right now? Yeah, so also uh, both. No, it's it's uh, basically um, the the economic activity uh, altogether because clearly uh, it it impacts uh, the the VC market as well. Of course, then you always have uh, a variety of startups in in different sectors that do. Uh, differently well um but but the overall economic environment uh has a relevant impact on on those markets as well mm -hmm. as well as the interest rates of course they are right now right because they are going up which is never good for investors <laughs> absolutely and it's also um i think it's irrespective of whether you look at different countries or different asset classes when you have the reference market, uh, government bonds uh, generating higher returns, uh, this is a very relevant pull factor from all other asset classes. And we've seen the turmoil in uh, public markets last year, and we expect this to translate at some point also um, into uh, effects in the private markets. No, this usually happens with a certain lag. Um, we also see that now in the beginning of 2023, uh, public stock ex exchanges, no valuations, stock valuations have gone up again. 
Um, so the, the, the picture is somewhat mixed. And overall, uh, we, we do expect that this uh, difficult economic environment, macroeconomically, in terms of uh, real economic activity, but also the environment with increasing interest rates to fight inflation will translate into a difficult environment for uh, the VC market. The positive developments or I think factors that um, buffer potentially negative uh, impacts on the German market We had very, very strong fundraising in the past few years, and there is uh, a lot of dry powder in investment uh, funds, VC funds in Germany. So that I think um, uh, will will basically help the the German VC market, and actually leads me to be uh, slightly on the optimistic uh, side. When it comes to to the development over the next uh, in in the medium term, mm -hmm. I see. We we are already talking a little bit about the current situation, meaning the last publication. I I know I teased you already before the interview a little bit before with the forecasts, and I vividly remember uh, uh, the, the the saying: uh, "Forecasts are always difficult, especially concerning the future." So <laughs> let's be a little bit here on the current situation because we found a lot of news just recently that the confidence. Um, They used something like collapsed uh, when referring to your Q4 2022 index. And there you wrote <clears throat> the business climate indicator for early stage segment nosedived 25.6 points to minus 42.9 balance points with the expectation of the unprecedented coronavirus shock in the first quarter of 2020. The only recent time sentiment was worse was 20 years ago. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I'm a continuous optimist. I would say, well, we've seen the bottom. Everything points at least a little bit upward. Um, and maybe we've seen the worst. Um, what have been your thoughts when you put this uh, Q4 2022 together? All gloom and doom, or it can only get better from here? Well, I, um, I think that Uh, we were ready to uh, to think that the uh, downward uh, movement <laughs> had come to a stop in Q3 uh, to then see that that the development uh, was go going uh, down further. Um, at the same time, I do think that uh, with public markets um, becoming Uh, more positive at the beginning of 2023. Also, with um, the the economic outlook cheering up, um, the the, um, the and and then a lot of dry powder in the market. Uh, that there is a good chance that we'll see um, an improvement in in the sentiment. And we, we also have to, to really see that, uh, we, we come out of a very difficult year last year. No, with the, with the war, um, of Russia and, and Ukraine, we've, uh, certainly seen uh, an extreme level of uncertainty. Uh, I think the fourth quarter was impacted still by that, by the negative numbers that came in, uh, from, Uh, f from from business accounting, uh, and then also uh, you had the um, the um, challenge with um, with the cryptocurrencies. Uh, I think that really dragged on uh, investor sentiment uh, worldwide. Um, so, on top of that, there was a temporary stop to a um, public support program in in Germany which now has restarted again but th there were a lot of factors that pounded on sentiment in the fourth quarter so um that 
Um, I I think that um, it's very likely that we see improvement um, ahead of us. What you refer to is the so-called invest grant that expired, basically giving um, uh, some public money on early stage investments, early stage business angel investments. And that was basically cut and then restarted early this year. Admittedly, I do have a lot of business angels in my LinkedIn timeline and they totally don't like the new setup, but that is a completely different topic. I totally understand you're not responsible for that. Well, and I think it's important that there is uh, support again. No, and I think it's also a success that uh, that the program restarted and uh, that the temporary stop uh, could could basically um, be um, contained to a, to a very short period of time. I think that was important. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, when you would now make an outlook, would you say? With the public markets going up, there is a chance that the mood improves. And for our audience who doesn't have a finance background, basically, the public markets are important because it gives an exit opportunity for the private investors and meaning the better valuation there on the public markets, the higher the expectation of the investors, they can realize such high multiples on the public market as well and basically cash in there with an IPO. Yeah, um, I, 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 um, I think that that absolutely is 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 relevant, no, for for investors, and that's that's also um, what my expectation would be that we will see. But then again, no, we are in a in an environment with this extreme uncertainty. We've seen in the in the index last year um, how 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 different factors impact on sentiment no and after all uh we are collecting on purpose uh a sentiment indicator so i think um it's also fair uh to expect that in the environment in which we are which is still characterized by um continued high risks no that we will see some up and down in in the um in 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 the um in the sentiment however i my my expectation would be in terms of a trend that we will see an improvement well if we hit an almost 20 year low i assume it would be better to be going up and um, we will totally refer to the news publications of your index every quarter in our news and always refer to this interview Thank you very much. It was a total pleasure having you here as a guest. Yeah, thank you very much, Jörn, for the opportunity. It was a pleasure and I'm happy if uh, the analysis of uh, investors' sentiment in the German market can be helpful uh, for, for others that are considering this market. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.